Hi everybody, my name is Jason. I'm Caden. I'm Jaden. I'm Yai. And we are the Yahua and the Torah channel. And we thank you guys very, very, very much for hanging out with us. It is a first day on our Creator's calendar. <clears throat> it is the day of the sun, the Sol Victus. The day that the Christians will sharpen their swords as they eat their pork and beans in their Sunday worship church. It's the day that we are called to work. It's not called, we don't need to work, but... It's definitely not called to um, have a day of uh, worship that the man has made that people are worshiping on the wrong day. <clears throat> Who are we and what do we believe, gentlemen? Anybody. We believe that the law is established in the commandments, the Torah, the first five books of the Bible are to be followed, to be obeyed, to be diligently studied. And <coughs> we believe that the Messiah, people know him as Jesus Christ. We know him as Yehoshua, because there's no J's in the early days of Hebrew. So we know him as Jehoshua, and he died for our sins, so we do not have to sacrifice animals and have a priest. He became our the sacrifice and the priest. Right. And let me see where that dog is. That is uh, it's probably at the front door. Yeah, sorry, everybody. We have nine pit bulls, and so they uh, they come and go as they, they please, and sometimes they don't come or go. They just sit outside and bark. All right, so we believe that the law, statutes, and commandments of our Creator are good for all times, and we are in reading through the very last chapter of a very, I guess, an interesting time in the life of Yisrael. Eli, will you please stop the tails from banging on the table? And so here we are, guys. The Guys, what you're looking at right here is you're looking at Yah's scriptures. This is a limited edition print, which means you'll probably want to get your hands on this while it is still available. It is 3,153 pages. You will never find a scriptures that looks and feels as big as this is that has the restored name of our creator. Right there, Yahuwah. It also has the name of his son, our Messiah, Yahushua. And it also sports three amazing bookmarks. And you will never find a better English translation anywhere out there. And so a lot of people have grab, grabbed these. <clears throat> you can grab the free versions of them. The Google app which was thousands of dollars in the making, and it was um, a, a year, year and a half. It was a very long project to get the Google app out there. That is absolutely free of charge. The PDFs are absolutely free of charge. All of this is 100% free of charge. And um, we ask that if you guys would like to help support this, this ministry, that you guys will grab one of these because we are able to get one full scriptures into our brothers and sisters in chains um, at, during this ministry, as well as being able to minister to them and spend time with them and try to see if there's any hope of a kingdom person with them. Now, this is, um, we'll, we'll probably go over this chart again, but these are our, this is where we are, where it began really with the kings of Yisrael. And it's not where it began because we're looking at a thousand years, um, uh, you're looking at, yeah, you're looking at way after creation on this. So you have, um, you had Saul, you had David, you have Solomon and Solomon was the, was probably the greatest, uh, wizard of all times. I don't know if you could probably say there's any more, anyone more qualified than him. Uh, if you're looking at, uh, harnessing the dark arts and the dark powers of the occult, um, uh, probably one of the greatest Freemasons there was of all times as well. Eli, we please do all you can to stop the dogs from pounding the table with their tails. Okay, so here we are into where the northern tribes and the southern tribes split. And guys, this is important, and I've gone over this a few times, but most people have no idea because most people never read their scriptures. So most people never have an idea of what their true identity is. And so at the top of here, you have Judah or Yehuda, and you have Yisrael or Yisrael on the right. And so you have the, the northern kingdom on the right. You have the southern kingdoms on the, the left. And so within Judah, you had two tribes. You have Benjamin and you had Judah. And then you had all of the rest of the tribes that were up at the top of Yisrael. Now, these two guys, these, these two different tribes, these two big tribes that comprised of all the 12 tribes, uh, they were at it tooth and nail. They, they hated each other. They were uh, Hatfields and McCoys, and they were always um, trying to get each other killed, always trying to get um, some kind of hand in the, in the upper hand in all of this. And so this is the group of people that we went through, and this these guys are all now in captivity. 
and they never, ever, ever came back out of captivity based upon Bible prophecy. Now, we're going to be going into Hosea at some point soon where this is a lot of this may come into light for a lot of you guys. But this is very important because the 10 tribes of Yisrael have been dispersed into the four corners of the world up until the end times when people will discover their identities and they will um, decide that, hey, the laws, statutes and commandments of our creator are not only great things for us, but they are absolutely wonderful. So as we discover the identity of who the northern tribes are, which very much could be all of us, this is what we're doing as we're going through this. And as we just pause that right there, uh, my dogs all just ran outside to a giant bird that um, they're deciding to take. And so here we are right here about to kill the dogs again. All right, so now continuing on, since we fired our weapons seven or eight times today <clears throat> to get the birds out of the trees, here we are again. Now, what we're talking about here is we're talking about the southern tribes of Yisrael, and this is the kings and the times that they are, that they have been. These are all the bad kings, and there's only like one or two that ever did something useful, and everybody else started putting Asheroth poles, starting worshiping other uh, foreign mighty ones, they started uh, offering their kids into Moloch. It just, it's, it's nonstop. And so here we are, and we actually don't have it right here because this is the very last king right here. And so we don't actually see any others and because we are into 2 Kings 25 right here. Um, <clears throat> anybody want to take us back to the last chapter, anything before that? Well, they went into captivity. They started fighting against Egypt. They lost. Who Egypt. went into captivity? Uh, Judah. They are uh, fighting Egypt. They lost against Egypt. Egypt put them into slavery again, kind of like a slavery, more of a, they controlled the land. And then um, Asher came up, which is, um, what's the land? Uh, Persia and Babylon. And they all came up against there. And they, start, they took over Egypt's reign. They took over Judah. And they all sent all these people against them. And now they are in complete control. And Nebuchadnezzar chooses who runs uh, Judah and who is in charge. And he is basically taking over control. And he is killing people, taking people out of captivity. And uh, we're in the. And they keep, every time they um, get he puts a new king in, they do a little more wickedness than Alaska. And yeah. They keep getting punished more and more. And so, literally, they're already in captivity. Um, but this is the final chapter of Kings. And so. Anyone going to be missing kings? This has been taking us a long time. Yeah. We used to blow through these books much faster than this. But because we only get like one or two days a week that we're actually doing this, it takes a long time to do this. You guys have any idea when we actually started Second Kings? No idea. I'm going to take a guess. How many months ago would you guys guess that was? Four or five. I would more than that. I would probably say that too. That's what I was guessing. It's, it's been a while. Probably like five or six months. Yeah, our family got divided. Everybody went different ways and so that's why we now split up all of our readings that we do because we're just not all here anymore okay um such as life let us continue and let us talk about what's up second kings 25 and it came to be in the ninth year of his reign in the 10th month on the 10th of the month that nebuchadnezzar sovereign of babylon all his army came against jerusalem and camped around it and they built a siege wall against it all around what do you guys think a siege wall is? What do you think that looks like? Uh, something to lock them inside the wall. Yeah, probably like people, right? Yeah, so, that you... so they can't get an escape. So basically, it's like what happened in uh, the days 70 AD when they all got trapped in the Judah. They all had to start eating their children because they're so Jerusalem. Hungry. Jerusalem, yeah. Okay. And the city was besieged until the 11th year of sovereign Zedekiah. By the 9th of the month, the scarcity of food had become so severe in the city that there was no food for the people in the land of the land. Now, this is the same thing that um, Jane was just talking about in 70 AD. This is what Messiah was talking about. And everybody thinks that we're, we're, Messiah was talking about the end of the age. When Messiah was talking like literally 70 years from the time that he was here. Um, June, 9th. June 9th, 2024. So when you guys started. Okay, so it was Second Kings. Second Kings. Wow. Okay, Mr. Cole found it for us. Fast, the facts for sure there. Yeah, okay. And so... The 70 AD thing, a lot of people think that's in times, but it's it's not. It was literally 70 years about after our Messiah left that he went um, 
that, that basically Jerusalem was besieged and everybody was starving to death. Everybody ate their kids. Um, Messiah says, if you're in the cities, don't go back. If you're, you know, run for your lives, essentially is what he's talking about on that. But that's not what he was talking about here. Okay, three. By the ninth of the month, uh, and the city was besieged until the 11th year of sovereign Zedekiah. Yahoo. Uh, by the ninth of the month, the scarcity, I just went over to Isaiah. I just took me to school. By the ninth of the month, the scarcity of food had become so severe in the city that there was no food for the people of the land. Then the city wall was breached and all the men of battle fled at night by the way of the gate between two walls, which was by the sovereign's garden. Even though the Kassadites were still encamped all around the, against the city and the sovereign went by the way of the desert plain. All right. Anybody want to describe exactly what we just read? What happened here? So these dudes, basically, they uh, some men about at night came through, broke down, and parts of the wall escaped. And uh, Kassadites, first, of, uh, first of all, the city wall was breached. Breached, yeah. So what does that mean? So that means that uh, the enemies were inside the wall. Outsiders land. have broken through the wall, yeah, right? So the, and you remember Hezekiah was one that was building up the wall. He was restoring the wall. Yep. And uh, this wall will get built in quite was, a few years, another yeah. 70 years after this. This wall is about to become dust. Okay, um, and so what, what happened, right? So the wall was broken, and then all the men, what does it say? They fled well, away, and by night uh, of the gate, um, the men of battle fled at night, even, by the way, of the gate. Yeah, even though the enemy was sitting right outside the wall, they, were, they, they, they all escaped. They were done. They were, it was over. They basically quit. Yeah, and so and it looks like as well as the king, the sovereign went out, by the way, as well. Uh, everybody's running for their lives. And the army of the Kassadites pursued the sovereign and overtook him in the desert plains of Jericho. And all his army was scattered from him. And they seized the sovereign and brought him up to the sovereign at Babel, at Riv Rivla. And they pronounced sentence on him. And they slaughtered the sons of Zedek Yahu before his eyes. And put out the eyes of Zedek Yahu and bound him with bronze shackles and took him to Babel. All right. So this is kind of a uh, interesting ending, right? Yeah. Um, Kate, what does it say? Uh, they basically found him by himself a year ago, killed his kids, took out his eyes. Not just killed his kids. What did they do? Killed him before him in front of him. Yeah, and then what did they do? Then they took his eyes. Then they so were the last thing he ripped. saw was his eyes. That's a pretty horrible It's ending. a pretty terrible way to go, isn't it? Um, absolutely, yeah. And you, you know that they didn't surgically remove the eyes nicely. Yep, they just plucked these bad boys out and it was over. <clears throat> so an interesting way to the end, but this is a dude that... Um, he, did, he didn't make it, right? He, he, he wasn't serving Yah the way that uh, he should have been. Okay, and then in the fifth month, on the seventh of the month, which was the 19th year of Sovereign Nebuchadnezzar, Sovereign of Babel, Nebuzaradan, the Zeradan, the chief of the guard, the servant of the Sovereign of Babel, came to Jerusalem, and he burned the house of Yahuwah and the house of the Sovereign and all the houses of Jerusalem. Even every great house he burned with fire. And all the army of the Kazdites, who were with the chief of the guard, broke down the walls of Jerusalem all around. Now, um, to burn something like this with fire, we would have to be led to believe that these things were made with wood, right? right? Yeah, I think so. I, I, think I mean, we do see we wood know. overlaid with gold. Yeah, we know he used cedar and stuff, a lot of cedar from Lebanon. Yeah, because we, we live in, you know, it's been nearly a decade since we left North America, and so we're not used to the, uh, let's just say, the weaker than they should be houses of North America, right? Everybody in North America builds all their stuff with, with sticks, and so all the fires come raging through every year, and everybody's houses burn down, and that's just what life is. I don't know why they do that. Uh, maybe it's cheaper. But down here in Latin America, everyone builds their houses with brick. You just don't you don't end up with any kind of uh, stick houses. I don't think stick houses would make it down here because it's so wet. You would constantly be, uh, it would just be tough. Uh, but anyway, um, you would just probably assume these guys had wooden houses. Okay, 10. <clears throat> and all the army of the Kazdites who were with the chief of the guard broke down the walls of Jerusalem all around. And Nebuzaradan, the chief of the guard, took into exile the rest of the people who were left in the city and the deserters who deserted to the sovereign of Babel with the rest of the multitude. But the chief of the guard left some of the poor of the land as vine dressers and farmers. So I guess uh, not everybody got taken into exile, right? Yeah, not completely ruthless. Yeah, well, they at least left the poor there. The poor aren't the people who are going to rise up, right? They're... they're, they're Everybody who would probably 
be a threat to these people. They took into captivity and they, they put where they need to be. And then they let these guys, you know, the poor people are just like thankful to be alive. Right. They're like, hey, all right. You want us to do some uh, vine dressing? Awesome. Let's do it. Thirteen. And the bronze columns that were in the house of Yahuwah and the stands in the bronze sea that were in the house of Yahuwah, the Kazdites broke in pieces and took their bronze away to Babel. You guys remember this? The, mm -hmm. uh, the house of Solomon, though. Yeah, I remember giant Solomon's giant bronze sea thing he had. Mm -hmm. And they took the pots and the shovels and the snuffers and the ladles and all the bronze utensils that Kohen used in the service. And the chief of the guard took the fire holders and the basins, which were of solid gold and solid silver. The bronze of all these utensils were was beyond measure. The two columns, the one sea, and the stands, which Shalom had made for the house of Yahuwah. The height of one column was 18 ama, and the, and the capital on it was of bronze. And the height of the capital was three ama, and the network and the pomegranates all around the capital were all of bronze. And the second column was the same with the network. We're talking about Solomon's giant pool thing he had, right? Little, I, I is that what so. we're talking about here? I think Anyone? Okay, you with about. me? I, you have any idea? So no the, idea. the pomegranates, weren't those near the doors? The pomegranates? pomegranates on everything, right? Mm -hmm. the, yeah, he the, loved pomegranates. The, the uh, menorah had pomegranates on it. Um, there was always pomegranate bale things, right? Even, they, the, like, old, even, even the, the old temple had yeah, the pomegranates old all over it. Yeah, the old temple had pomegranates. Or is this his two columns? His two that he uh, puts Boaz in the other one? Uh, the bronze of these utensils is beyond measure. The two columns. Yeah, so this is, his, yeah. this is Solomon's two Masonic those, columns. Yeah, that's right. The, the, and that's right. They are two Masonic columns. This is... Uh, so if you look at what Freemasonry is today and their entire setup on this, um, Solomon is the, the leader of this stuff. He was absolutely the leader of evil. 18. And the chief of the guard took Seriah, the chief Kohenim, and Zephaniah Yahu, the second Kohenim, and the and three doorkeepers. And out of the city he took a certain eunuch who was appointed over the men of battle. And five men of those who saw the sovereign's face, who were found in the city, and the chief scribe of the army who mustered the people of the land, and 60 men of the people of the land who were found in the city. And I got to talk about the eunuch being leader of the uh, battle guys. I mean, here we have more eunuchs. Um, and the eunuchs, we, we hear about eunuchs doing all sorts of stuff. There's, there's eunuchs that toss Jezebel out windows. Yes. Um, there's all sorts of stuff about eunuchs. And this particular eunuch... Um, was appointed the man over battle. And I, I find it just, I don't know why I find it fascinating, but I don't know what the, I don't know what it means really. So continue on. If anyone out there understands why the, the why I, I don't, I don't get it. Maybe, uh, maybe uh, I'm not meant to get it. And Nebuzaradan, chief of the guard, took them and made them go to the sovereign of Babel at Rivlah. And the sovereign of Babel smote them and put them to death at Rivlah in the land of Kamath. So he exiled Yehuda. From its own land. And he appointed Gedel Yahu, son of Akiyakam, son of Shaphan, over the people who were left in the land of Yahuda, whom Nebuchadnezzar, sovereign of Babel, had left. left. Now, there's enough people there, right, of this that he left a, um, he le it sounds like a Israel person, right? Yeah. Is, uh, Gedel, Gedel Yahu. Now, why do you think he would put a person of Yisrael? Uh, over, over, like basic stuff of the land. Because they're not going to listen. They're not listen to someone from Babel. So if it's one of their own, they're going to listen to him. So Nebuchadnezzar has to tell us to do what he wants, and he has to tell people to listen because he is one of their own. Yep. Yep. And all the commanders of the armies, they and their men, heard that the sovereign of Babel had appointed Gedaliyahu, and they came to Gedaliyahu at Mitzvah. Even Yishmael, Yishmael, son of Nethaniah, and Yochanan, son of Kiriak, and Seriah, son of Tan Kumath and Netopathite. Na names are just so hard. And ya uh, Yan Azaniyahu, the son of Maakathite. They and their men. Guys, if you think it's easy, try it. Here we are. Let's sound it out. And Gedaliyahu swore to them and their men and said to them, Do not be afraid of the servants of the Kazdites. Dwell in the land and serve the sovereign of Babel, and it will be well with you. Now, is this guy... This guy's bought out. Did, well... Is he bought out or, I mean, is there any reason to rise up at this point? I mean, if there's only like 15 of you left and you have, I mean, is there a reason to like. No, not to, really. I mean, is I mean, Yah is not with them anymore. They're not going to win if they try. They'll just die. So there's no point in like doing it because Yah has walked away from them. It's over, right? All yeah. their 
their their country they used to have is gone. Everything's gone. Yeah, the house Yahoo is destroyed. They have a mayor left. A guy has get a lot Yahoo. He's the mayor of the country. Yeah, right? he's, he's not even in charge. <laughs> no. Okay. And in the seventh month, it came to be that Yishmael, son of Nethanyah, son of Elisha, Ma, Elisha, Ma. Of the seed of the rain came with ten men and smote Gedali Yahu, that he died, and the Yahudim and the Kazdites who were with him at, at Mizpah. Okay, um, wh what happened here? Somebody who actually was one of the, was, um, one of the genealogy of David he came up and he wanted he wanted to be king of this little of the fifteen people, so he went and killed one of fifteen. Now they're down to fourteen. <laughs> I just want the mayors taking out the mayors. Yeah. He has some anger issues. Yeah, it's a little bit. But you you never know why, right? But, I mean, people are, um, they went through a lot of stuff. So, who knows what this he was all about. He wants to be king. It makes it feel important at this point. Or they didn't like whatever he was doing. Or they thought, just like you said, he turned tail. Or the guy was like, you know, um, on bought the wrong out. side, bought out. Yeah. Okay, 26. And all the people rose up, small and great, and the commanders of the armies, and went to Mitzram, for they were afraid of the Kazdites. And it came to be in the 37th year of the exile of Yaho Yechim, sovereign of Yehuda, in the 12th month, on the 27th of the month, that Ewell Merodach, sovereign of Babel, in the year that he began to reign, released Yaho Yechim, sovereign of Yehuda, from prison, and spoke kindly to him, and appointed his throne above the throne of the sovereigns who were with him in Babel, and changed his prison garments, and he ate bread continually before the sovereign all the days of his life. And as his allowance, a continual allowance was given to him from the sovereign, a quota, for each day, all the days of his life. All right, so you have this guy, it looks like, it's almost looks like evil Merodach, but it's like evil <laughs> Merodach. Um, but he seems like he's less uh, evil than the people before him because he let this this fellow out. Um, what, do you, what do you think life was like? Do you think he went back into bars after this? Do you think he just ate bread with the sovereign and yeah, then like, went yeah. back I mean, to his jail I mean, cell? I you can't see. Well, well, I think he had a throne off. here, right? Yeah. Then you give him a throne. Um, yeah. And so I guess he has a throne. He gets to sit out there. He's, he's probably the oldest at this point, right? Because he's probably near 20, 30 when he reigned, and now he's in another, almost another 40 years, so he's probably 60s, 70s, maybe. Yeah. Maybe yeah. even older. Yeah, so Ewell Merodach must have like, felt really bad for this homeboy. Yeah, he's probably like, well, the really old at this point. He's most his no life. No eyes. Yeah. probably sits there and cries a lot, tears. Like, uh, you know, his eyes are probably all pussy and stuff. Since they didn't surgically remove his eyes, right? I'm sure he had eye issues for the rest of his life. Yeah. Um, Something would be my guess. I don't know. So what happens when you uh, break the commands and don't obey them? Yeah, it does. But I mean, people lose their eyes a lot and they don't break the commands. And yeah. so it's just, it's one of those things. All right. Well, this is it, guys. We hope that you guys have a wonderful day. We hope you guys are seeking our creator where he's able to be found. Much love to everybody. We're out. All right. All right. Shalom. Shalom.